G'day and welcome back to the channel. So in today's video, I'm going to show you some things that I use clinically to help reverse knock knees. As you hopefully understand from maybe watching some of these videos, knock knees or a valgus knee or a knee that dumps inwards isn't just a knee issue. It's a function or a dysfunction associated with how well the rest of the leg is going. So if we're going to try and solve these dysfunctions and get you to the point where you can be confident that you've resolved the problem and it's not going to come back again. We need to work on some strategies that try and attempt to correct that valgus knee or that knock knee position to load up your tissue better, to improve the function of the area and decrease the risk of something going wrong. Now, it's really important to acknowledge as well that genetically and mechanically, some people are more knock kneed than others. I'll challenge you to go through each one of these exercises or each one of these ideas, see how much of that you can improve upon and see what's left over. So the first thing we want to go through is we want to get an understanding of whether you have that, uh, that position. I want you to stand up and squat down as deep as you feel comfortable. So the great thing about a squat is that a deep squat tells us everything that we need to know about your leg mechanics, or at least gives us a lot of clues or a window into what might be causing some dysfunction or what might be causing some potential dysfunction down the track. And essentially what we want to find is if you do stand and your knees are sort of knocked a little bit, or you squat down in your knees cave in, there's potentially a really fundamental mechanical reason for that. So what we tend to look for here is when we're looking at the health and the function of your knees and how to reverse that knock knee position, we ultimately need to go looking for some restrictions in your ankle and some restrictions in your hip, among other things. And the reason why this is really important is because if you have your feet straight and you turn your knees out to create that stability and that rotation through your arch, through your feet and through your hips, is when you bend down, if you don't have any ankle range to facilitate that position, all your body can do is to find the path of least resistance and go inside of that. So the first thing that's really important to work on is ankle mobility. So as we've done a lot on the channel, uh, we love to use these power bands. I'll leave a link in the description if you want to pick one up. But essentially, a power band is a great way to hook into the joint, try and decrease that joint stiffness, allowing the tissue to move better, taking away one of the handbrakes that your body is trying to work around that's dumping that knee inwards and giving you that knock knee position. So how we like to do this is you want to place the band right down the base of the ankle, essentially underneath the joint there. I take a big step out so the band's pulling behind and step out forward with the other leg. What we want to do here is we want to make sure that you bend that back ankle as far as you feel comfortable to the point where your heel probably wants to lift off. But the crucial piece of information here, just to show you this from the front, is again, imagine the band's pulling back here, but we don't want to get to the position where we're dumping inwards because I can go further in this position, but the point is I want to go through this stiffness, not around it. So we want to make sure that when you get your foot on the ground, that you rotate that knee outwards before you go forwards to try and bias some of that stiffness we might be creating that valgus knee or that knock knee position. Again, we want to hang out here for 30 seconds, 60 seconds, allow this tissue to give a little bit, see some effective change and then once you've done that what we want to do putting you back into a good position with your feet straight knees out when you squat down again and hopefully you can see this with me but it suddenly feels like i have a little bit more range of motion to work through on that side so with any of these stretches and any of the things we're going to go through in this video you should see an immediate change in some way otherwise it's just not worth your time or at least you want to be striving for that so that you feel like the things that you're doing are working and it's easy for you to stay out of that position into a better more mechanically sound position and as we spoke about before often that knee coming inwards is a consequence of trying to work around a restriction at the ankle or if we lack some of the range of motion to get into that position through the hip, then the knee can genuinely want to cave in and play in this space as opposed to this space. So the second stretch that I want to go through is a hip rotation stretch. So one of the, the best stretches for this is a hip external rotation stretch, because again, in this position, when we're squatting down with our knees out, we're essentially trying to do this with our knee, this external rotation while we're coming down. So a great stretch to do here is that you can do this on the ground, you can do this on a chair, whatever you feel is most comfortable for you. But we've done this a lot before. So as you drop that knee down, we wanna basically look for some tightness through the glutes on the outside here. We wanna make sure that we sort of pivot around, trying to find where the best version of that stretch is. Once we've found that tightness, we wanna give that tightness a squeeze. We wanna tense up the butt cheeks, make that tightness work, make the tissue release so that when you relax, it gives. 
then you might find that you can drop down a little bit deeper, press into that hip a little bit more, give it another good squeeze again, tense the butt cheek up, hold that for a few seconds. When you relax, it relaxes. And what you'll find is when you stand up again, having done this leg, again, feet straight, knees out. As you squat down, it just feels like now that I can get that knee out further than what I could before. So hip external rotation, particularly when you squat, can be a great way to give you some range of motion options where your knee might be wanting to come in, but ultimately comes out again. And then the third exercise that I think is really, really important here is that not only do we want to make sure that we have the range to get our knees into a better position, but we also need the strength and control at our hips to hold that knee in a good position while we're doing the things that we need to do. A great way to do this is with the clam exercise. Again, we've done this a thousand times before. The idea with this is you want to bend your knees up, heels together. We're looking to try and improve some of the musculature at the back of your butt cheek. So if you find the bony bump at the side, bring that back a little bit towards your back pocket a little bit more. Being nice and sort of up tall on your side, we don't want to roll back at all. We don't want to roll forward so much. Keep everything really still. Dig your fingers into that butt cheek, keeping your heels together. We just want you to lift your top knee up as far as you feel comfortable. Pause there for a second and then come down. So again, if you go too high, you'll find that you'll roll backwards. That takes the pressure off the back of your hip, puts it more towards the front of your hip. That's not what we're looking for here. We want to make sure that nothing moves except for your uh, top leg. We want to do enough of these that you feel you can fatigue yourself and tire yourself out. That might be a couple of sets of 10. It might be a couple of sets of 15. If you find that this exercise is too easy, grab one of those booty bands, wrap it around your thighs, make this harder. Make sure that when you're doing this, you can generate some of that external rotation strength to help support your knee when you need it. And then the extension of that is once you've done that, we then want to make sure that we put it back into a squat. So if you have the band around your knees, with your feet straight, knees out, with the band pulling this time, trying to force you inwards but trying to keep you outwards, we want to make sure that you practice this shape over and over again so that when you need this position or when you're running and jumping or doing something, your tissues are now used to being in a better position and not dumping in a certain position that might be causing that knock knee and perpetuating some of the dysfunction that you might have. So those four exercises, I think, are really important building blocks for anyone trying to reverse or improve a knock knee or a valgus knee position. Clearly, there's going to be a whole bunch of nuance around this. There's a bunch of ankle stuff that we can work on. Hip flexor tightness can be one of the main reasons why these feet want to turn out in the first place, which can facilitate that dumping forward of the arch, collapsing of the arch, the knee and the leg sort of rotating inwards into that valgus position. But those sort of four ideas, the ankle mobility, the hip mobility, the hip strength, and practicing a good squat technique with your feet straight and your knees out, those seem to be a really strong foundation of support to try and reorientate the way that that knee's functioning by focusing on the leg as a whole. And as I said at the start of the video, if you're someone who believes that genetically, you are someone who has knock knees, which there are people that are that way. Or if you're someone who has evolved to the point where structurally you're arthritic or you have some other issues that have forced you into that knock knee position, I still think it's really important for you to try and go through this process of freeing up your ankle, freeing up your hip, getting your hip stronger, improving the way that your squatting looks. Because even if there is a limit and a ceiling as to how good you can feel, you don't know what it is until you start to optimize these things to see it for what it might actually be. So let me know in the comments down below what your thoughts are on that and whether you found some of these ideas insightful or interesting. Please consider leaving a like rating on the video if you did find it helpful. Subscribe to the channel if you want more of this type of content. And if it was interesting and helpful, please consider leaving a super thanks donation on the video. But with that being said, thanks for watching. I appreciate you stopping by and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.